All right, so Nick Unsworth here about to go bust in on Joseph McClendon III, who is uh, going to t be talking about the psychology of success. You might know Joseph from being on stage with Tony Robbins, one of the number one coaches with Tony, speaking on his stages all over the world. And so I'm excited to go give you a tour of his house. So follow me. But before. Hi guys, come on in. W one in? moment. Yes, uh, yeah. Well, I'll send the helicopter down and, and we'll fly them in from the east wing of the property. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Good to see you, man. Good. Good. So we got a chopper yeah. coming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they'll, and they'll take you back down to the other end of the oh, property. Oh, perfect. It'll yeah. land in the bathroom, <laughs> I hope, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for inviting us into your my house. My pleasure. Welcome to my home. Thank you. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd love to, to start with a little tour. So, sure. Come where on would in. you like to take us? How did the dragon end up here? Well, I'm a sculptor, I'm an, I'm an artist from years ago, and one of my dreams, one of them is, is if I ever do retire, is to sit down and sculpt. And, to, and, okay. to, and I fell in, I was in Thailand about 10 years ago, and I saw this and I just fell in love with it because it's just an unbelievable piece of art. And it took almost six months for, to get it shipped from there to here. And I just, I, I love all of the detail about it and everything, so I aspire to be able to do things That's like that. That's awesome. You got another little dragon over there. Yeah, that is Winston, <laughs> and I think I told you about this, don't look him in the eyes because he's designed, he's trained to go for the jugular. He's ruthless. Yes, he is. Is, he's that, is that his boxing glove? Or? Well, he got, he hurt his little foot, so he's, he's bandaged up. Injuring and, someone else, probably? Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he's, he's an attack dog, as you can see. So come on in, cool. come on in. This is, uh, you know, I, I'm a musician, so I, I love to have music all around me, and this is uh, our piano room, or one of them, if you will, here. And, and, uh, kind and of so thing. how many instruments do you play? What's, uh... Uh, gosh, I don't know. I started off playing piano, okay. and I play a bit of guitar and some drums, and uh, uh, my favorite instrument is bass guitar, so okay. uh, I play. I was a singer-songwriter for a long time. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was my profession before I started doing what I do. Are there any uh, clips online? We might have to cut in a little. There are. There are. All there right. Are. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll bring something up. Yeah. Matter of fact, cool. one. No, no. I did it in my other house. I've okay. been in this house probably, well, almost two years. Okay. And um, I have. I've always had a studio in my home, and, okay. and my I have a ten-year-old son now, and he and I make some music together from time nice. to time. Nice. Yeah, Very cool. Awesome. And, uh, and speaking of the studio, so I'll and it will just keep a wide berth yeah. around the dog because you don't want to get him angry. Yeah. <laughs> and this is uh, uh, my, my music studio. That, uh, this is where some of the magic gets to happen. This is my man cave. Okay, this is, uh, yeah. Uh, it's nice I'm that it's soundproofed up. You can out. just Yeah, you notice it thing. as you walk in. Yeah. Uh, and these are my, my children, uh, some of them. I've got a disease, and it's called I can't stop buying and collecting bass <laughs> guitars. And uh, I have, these are uh, some of my favorites, no. uh, and I have a few of them in the uh, in the uh, safe in the other room. So, uh, which one out of these would be your favorite, and why? Um, wow, I can't say it's, that in front with of their children. I know, right? You can't see. <laughs> Go uh, in the other room. I, I would have to say to, here's here's the way that works. Yeah. The question is, is which one is my favorite this month? Okay. And it's this one this month, and it's plugged in. So this is my favorite this month. But they're all, they're all, you know, it's like, I, I say this, it's like women with shoes. You know, you can't mm -hmm. just have one yeah. pair of shoes because you got lots of different outfits and lots of different cases. They all have a different purpose and different sounds and different tunings and so on and so forth. And these, these of course, are, are six string guitars, but my, my faves are, are the basses. So they're all my favorite. And all of them are custom made. I had them specifically, uh, uh, built uh, for me. I have this thing where I, I always believe in having this compelling future, something to look forward to. Yep. So these take a year to build. Wow. So I ordered one and set the, set the stakes, and this is several years ago. Uh, I ordered one, and then nine months later, I'll order another one. And then so I always know that You're one going is coming in. in a, you know, <laughs> right. So, you know. That's great. Awesome. And so what uh, do you have another one already in? I do. In progress now. Okay. I was just telling my yeah. friend Andy that um, I actually sold one uh, mm -hmm. a couple days ago just because I have this thing with myself that I want to keep a balance of only having 12 of them. Okay. I don't know why. It's just hey. my thing. So uh, I sold one to buy two more. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I just ordered uh, one more and, uh, and then a few months I'll order another one. That's cool. 
So this is Studio B. Yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is Studio B. I do a, <laughs> a lot of uh, videos. It's actually this doubles as my office as well. Okay. And um, but I do a, a lot of videos on uh, to help people, if you will. And, yep. and so shooting in here, and I just decided to kind of make this into that. So I can come in, turn it on any time of night, nice. and, uh, and uh, have. A semi. This is called my, my David Letterman Studio B. You know, it looks good on the camera, doesn't it? Let me get this. Right, get the full effect. Today, in the news, I'm going to tell you a little bit about you and how you can do better with you. The new and improved you coming up after these messages. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait! You got to do. You always got to do something. Ten. Like this. You got to go after these messages. I'll be right back. Yeah, a, lo a lot of shuffling, you yeah, know, yeah, shuffling top ten. You got to like shuffle. Yeah. yeah. So, so I noticed over here we got some some watch bands. My, so, I, I collect watches as well. Yeah. And my dear friend uh, Andy Broadway just gave me this watch. What and a good friend yeah, to have, friend. right? You got to have friends Love that like that. Guy. Yeah. And uh, it's an Invictus, and I, you know, I have several watches, and and he saw the watch and knew that I'd fall in love with this watch, and, I, and he's, yeah. I, he's he's influenced me to uh, to get other watches as well. But he saw this one, and I he brought it over to for as he's showed me other watches as as well. Yeah. Brought it over to take a look, and I said that one's awesome. Where did you get it? And he goes, Do you like it? And I go, Yeah. And he goes, It's yours. And so it's right like, off his wrist. Right, right. Well, no, oh. right out of the box. Oh, out of the box. <laughs> look at look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, brand new. Yeah, so. Has he ever worn a watch and you say, you know, what, I like that one, and then he just takes it no, off? No, no, no. Oh, okay. That'd first. be cool. He has <laughs> worn a watch, and I go, I like that one. And he goes, well, you can get it on the on this. You, know, you can go buy it here, and and I've, I've done that. So Andy's uh, but, really big, and he'll be coming up on Life Empire TV. He's big into yeah. bow ties. He ever convinced yeah. you to wear a bow tie? No. Okay. And well. it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he looks good in it, and, and me not so much. So. Yeah. So Andy, maybe yeah. next time. This is uh, sweet. This is our, uh, our theater room slash uh, man cave. Second man <laughs> cave. Hang on a second. Alexa, off. Um, and uh, yeah, modern technology. Right. I love it. Um, and this is where I have a. I shared with you my my son and I live here uh, in this little place. <laughs> yeah. And so. Uh, you know, I like we watch movies down here, and and uh, and of course I, I'm big into health and fitness, and it's a little messy back here. But here's our our little workout gym. Years ago, I stopped throwing my money away. This is just for me throwing yeah. my money on on gym memberships mm -hmm. because by the time I got dressed, got in the car, drove there, yeah. worked out, and then came all the way back, it was an hour, almost two hours, yeah. and. For me, uh, time is of the essence, I'm sure yeah. it is uh, yep. as well. So it just kind of cuts you down. Makes it come and, and what, is that an inversion? Yeah, it is. It's, uh, I've got, um, I should show you the other room as well. We'll yeah. go up there as well. Yeah. Um, I have rituals that I go through and I believe that, uh, again, kind of what we were just talking about with yeah. the, uh, uh, the secret and that kind of thing, having specific rituals that you go through is gonna set your life up. Yeah. And so I don't believe in working out really hard. I believe in working out consistently and taking care of yourself yeah. um, and taking care of your body. And this is one of them. Um, I, I do this probably three times a week. It's only okay. like three minutes at a time, but it keeps my spine in alignment. and. Uh, um, it keeps me healthy in those ways. That's good. Yeah. Love it. And I didn't. I'll, I'll introduce you to my my other pets. Matter of fact, we can do this together. I'll give Sweet. you the honors. I'll give you the honors. Hold that. A little fish food. And if you stand here for a second, as soon as they know. Oh, look at the they'll, size they'll of that one over there. Huh? Yeah. This one's 28 years old. No way. Yeah. And if you just throw it in there, throw it in there, and watch him go little... crazy. Oh yeah. The little ones wait for the big pigs to finish doing their <laughs> thing, and then they, they get in there and, and start doing it. That's there, awesome. It's real peaceful. I do my yoga out here uh, as well, and and uh, just kind of, it's a really nice, peaceful place to, to yeah. be able to. And uh, what I say to people is, you know, no matter what your budget is, find mm -hmm. yourself, have some place where you can call your nirvana, where you go yeah. and you can just be peaceful and just kind of tune everything else out yeah. and design your life that way. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be elaborate. It can be just, you know, sure. a small space in your garage or in your house. Yeah. You do that uh, uh, to make it. But those are my kids. That's great. I love it. I haven't, they, they have names, but I don't remember them. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the inner sanctum. This is the uh, this is where it all gets done. <laughs> no. uh, the manliest of yeah, man caves. Yeah, this is the, the manliest of man <laughs> caves. And um, 
I, I, I this is, uh, an, uh, I, I kind of set my house up as, as, and my life up is everywhere that you go can mm -hmm. be some sort of sanctuary. And I have yeah. rituals that I do every single morning. I get up, I stretch, I do yoga here, and I have something that I wanted to share with yeah. you. Two things, number one. I love to meditate, okay. but I don't have time to meditate. So I found two things. One of them is this, it's called an oxidizer or a chi machine. And I'll turn it on for you. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. you lay down. Yep. Lay down and put your ankles in there. All right, all right. And gonna get all oxid oxidized yeah, and what this up. does is you're not gonna get the full experience but you'll see what happens Ooh. oh oh hey so it just does that okay and you meditate while you're doing that and what happens is you can adjust the speed that's you know that's about what I do and it has a timer on it for about 15 minutes it's silent I'm yakking now but you can feel it already right it yeah. relaxes you and it just slowly unravels your spine loosens everything up while you're meditating. And what I've found is that it puts you in such a deep state of meditation. And what happens is not, after about 10 minutes, when this thing shuts off, it's the reason why they call it the oxidizer, a rush of energy goes through your body. It's a great way to, to start the day off. Now, I'm gonna speed it up just for a second. Oh, wow. That's and then hopefully you'll right get a there. little bit of a rush when I shut it off, only because of time, okay? But just take a couple deep breaths in your in your abdomen and just relax. And you'll notice after a while you start to become like a little noodle. And then when it shuts off, really is, is that cool. awesome? I'm now, gonna have to get one of these that things. Imagine tenfold, you know, after after 15 <laughs> minutes. And then the other thing here is, it's just, it's a vibrating. Uh, you know, you've seen these. Oh, is this one of those like where it machine. shakes you around? Yeah, but. What I do on it, and again, it's all about meditation. It's all about, and you can set the timer on this. I'll just set it here. But this thing vibrates, and I'll go full lotus No in way. It. Yeah, on this thing here, and I meditate while I'm on this, or I do my priming, that yeah. kind of thing. And what happens is the same thing. When this thing shuts off, the rush goes through. But the most important part about it is, that when you're on it, mm -hmm. it is lining up both sides of your brain. I have a rebounder here that I, yep. I bounce up and down on. Mm -hmm. um, I, that it lines up, it makes your right hemisphere and your left hemisphere think at the same time. Nice. And it's it's such a, I have never achieved a, a, as deep a state of meditation in an hour's worth of meditation or yoga than I've done in 20 minutes with these two machines. Wow. I love technology. I'm gonna have to try that yeah, out. Yeah. I'm getting into meditation. And they're cheap, so they're not that expensive. I think yeah. that thing's like maybe 150 bucks. This okay. is a little more expensive, but uh, and of course you gotta have bases in every room. And you gotta have, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you don't have bases in your room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, I had a, uh, I had a big 2,000 square foot uh, office on several, was been, well, two years ago. And I just decided to shut it down and bring everything into this house. When I bought yep. this house, it was big enough to do that because I, I didn't spend a lot of time down there. Yeah. You know, and every time when I'd want to shoot a video or I'd want to do something, sometimes it's, you know, I'm a, I'm a night owl, so yep. it's like 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, or any time that I'm inspired to do so, I want it to be right here. Yeah. So I just kind of built this, and this is a... And the commute's not too bad. Yeah, it's not so bad at all. <laughs> yeah. And it's really great with modern technology, you can, yeah. you know, set everything up and do everything from my iPad and just, just kind of run it that way, and it just works, so... And so what do you... Uh... So as far as creating content, what, is, um, what has been on your mind and heart to share with people? I know you're big into the psychology of success, yeah, but, yeah. but I'd love to hear just what, you know, as things ebb and flow in personal development, what are you finding that is leading to the most success for people? Well, as you and I will talk about more about this a little bit later, um, my foundational belief is this. It's 80%, it's 60% psychology. The trending yeah. thing is always is 80% psychology, 20% know-how and, and, mm -hmm. and, and mechanics. Uh, but I believe it's a little bit different. It's 60% psychology, meaning how we think. Yeah. And it is 20% mechanics, meaning doing. But it's also 20% attraction, what you attract, and attract into your life. Yeah. Luck and situation and circumstance and all of those things, they really do play into our lives, they really totally. do. We've all had those situations where we wanted something and and 
serendipitously or, or just coincidentally it showed up in our lives. Yeah. And, you know, many years ago there was the whole secret and the laws of attraction. Yeah. And although that stuff is great, it's it's only a small part of it. Mm -hmm. And now there's a science to it. And that's, that's what, uh, what I, uh, in terms of how we think, what we do, specifically how to do that, to, to, to magnify that and make it so that you become a magnet to the things that you want as well. That's cool. And so we're going to drill down on that right now? Yeah. Well, we can right. do, do you want to do that now? Yeah. Let's, yeah, do, let's, it. let's do it. Uh, let's, let's go. Let's go grab a seat. Fabulous. All right. Let's do it. All right, so we're we're in Studio uh, so this F. This is Studio A. <laughs> a. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got you know, 60 of them around the around the, the uh, premises here, but no. That's cool. Well, uh, Ed, so I'd love to, to drill down deeper into you know what you said about the psychology of success yeah. in the 60-20-20, and uh, to frame that up. Yeah, I I actually term it. I, I call it magnetic success, and mm -hmm. really what that means, Nick, is that that. We've heard the saying before, I said this before, that most people say that it's 80% psychology yep. and it's 20% mechanics and know-how and actually doing the stuff. And and I used to uh, prescribe to that and I used to uh, believe that, but then I also recognize that I see people, and we've all, we all say this, we look at somebody that's successful mm -hmm. and most people will say, well, that's a lucky person. Oh yeah. That's a lucky person. Uh, of course, and after they've got after it. After they've yeah. already got <laughs> it. And we know otherwise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, but, there is a certain amount of, of luck and coincidence and all those things that fall into place, if you will, yeah. once you're on the right track. And so to start things off, it is true, there is no denying, it's a no-brainer, no pun intended, uh, that people that are quote-unquote successful or achieve more, and, and specifically achieve more in a quicker amount of time, mm -hmm. it's no secret that they think differently than those that dabble and or fail. Yeah. And so the logic is, and that's psychology, by the way. Psychology yeah. is just our consistent thought process or our thought patterns that we have consciously and unconsciously. Um, but if, we, if you look at it, you go, if I just knew how they thought, mm -hmm. then I could do the same thing. And logically, that makes sense. Yeah. But even if you knew how they thought, and even if you knew what they believed, and even if you knew what to do, how do you get yourself to do that? Right. Especially in the midst of even some of the things you and I were just talking about with yep. all of the beat downs that we've had from our past experiences and, mm -hmm. and uh, negative inputs and our, our own uh, limiting beliefs about ourselves and all those things. How do you get yourself to do that? Yeah. So what my personal belief is as a psychologist is that you know, we have these iPhones that'll connect to the other side of the world and the infinite intelligence right there in our hands. Technology has, has improved so much just in the last 10 years. Doesn't it make sense that we've done the same with our ability right. to change our, our thought process? And so that's what I believe is that that's what it's all about. Let's change how we think so that we change how we feel, so that we change how we impact the world yep. and we start to encompass more of that 20% so that we can do more and have more as well. And so what would you say for someone that is um, maybe new to personal uh, development or they're starting a business or they're, they're about to stretch for something? Mm -hmm. So what would you say would be an actionable tip to, to take a step towards that? Well, training never stops. Yep. I mean, I'm, you and I were just talking about it. You were just attending another yep. event just a little while ago. Um, contrary to popular belief, a lot of people think that, well, I'm just going to go to this seminar and I'm going to get this stuff and then it's all over. I still, to this day, yeah still attend seminars and I'm always training, I'm always learning more. So start and get some sort of training and keep your feet in that water, that river, meaning continue to train, continue to go on. We talked about the book Think and Grow Rich. Yep. You know, I read that book. Um, I, I started at 19 years old, actually on my 19th birthday, and I read that book every year from the time I was 19 to I think I was like 32 years old. And then I just started reading other books. And the reason I share that with you, Nick, is, is every time I read it, I got something different. Mm. So you'll, you'll, you'll never stop learning, nor should you. So to answer your question, somebody that's just getting started, get some clarity in, uh, on what it is that you want and get some clarity on what you're after. Personal development is a broad right. statement, a broad uh, um, uh, set of words, but what does it mean? And it's just, in my opinion, it is just rehearsing whom you wish to become. Because in the process of rehearsing anything at all, you develop into a different person. You develop different skills. So find some training, get some training on specific areas. Yeah. Like one of the greatest things, I shouldn't say greatest, but one of the things that you teach is you, you help people kind of get very specific about what it is that, that from, their, from their business standpoint and, and how they're gonna market and all those things. Yeah. 
and, and that is your expertise, and you've helped thousands and thousands of people, so that's, a certain, that's certainly an aspect of what people should go after. Get trained in that, get trained in this, get trained in that, and yeah. you become a better person. What do you say is that, what, how much does the unconscious mind play a role in someone's ability to go out and get what they want? 70%, in my personal opinion, and here's why. The unconscious mind never shuts the hell up. <laughs> and it is the one that we are listening to. The unconscious mind is what mm -hmm. makes our hair grow, makes our heart beat, it makes all of these things happen without our consciously knowing about it, but it's constant and it's all the time. Yeah. And, and the, the significance of that is as long as it's, it's, it's like the operating system for your phone or your, or your yeah. computer. As long as it's going on, let's program it to operate and to say and to think the things that are going to be beneficial to us. Because yeah. most of the time we don't know what the heck it's saying. We don't know because it's unconscious. You right. know? It's going on. It's powerful, but we've been programmed by don't get me started, the media and everything else yeah. that's out there. Uh, and, and more specifically, we have an unconscious belief, thought pat pattern of ourselves yeah. that causes us to not do or to do and so on and so forth. And I think, so that's an, something that I, I see that holds a lot of people back is that mm -hmm. they might have those unconscious blocks or they're stuck or limiting beliefs or fears. And so what would be um, you know, something that you find to be the most helpful to get people through those types yeah. of blocks. First off, determine what it is. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a system. First yeah. off, figure out what it is that you want. Yeah. And get, that's, that's always got to be number one. Find that target. Number two, determine what it is that's stopping you. Mm -hmm. And this is where most people fall down on the job. And when I say the job, because the job starts there. That it's not just find out what it is. It's th that's a, the third step. Is let's do something about it. But most people, like for example, I'm just I always use these two examples: uh, losing weight and making money, just because they're low-hanging fruit. You yeah. know, and they're they're pretty popular uh, challenges in most people's lives. Most people will say, okay. My challenge is, is that I'm overweight, I'm unhealthy, okay? And then they generally go to, why am I that way? Mm -hmm. And as soon as they do that, our psyche is designed to move away from pain. And as soon as that answer comes up that, well, it's because you eat too much food, you lay around too much, and you don't exercise. And you're not, you know, you don't have a good, good, strong mindset and all this stuff that comes in, that's painful. Mm -hmm. So guess what happens? They say, oh, I have big bones. No, they, okay. well, they, they'll do that, <laughs> but instead they look for something that makes them feel better, which is what? Eating food or distract themselves yeah. with television or so on and so forth. So they move away from that and it doesn't feel good. So the trick is, again, we're talking mm -hmm. about training, you know, yeah. help, find somebody to help you, stay in that place, let's figure out what it is. It's not about why, it isn't. It's not about why you are this way, because most people, it's, we call it an endless loop question. If you keep asking why, you're gonna keep feeling bad, you're gonna keep moving away from it. Mm. Once you figure out what it is that stops you, then let's move to third step, and third step is the mechanics, I call it emotional mechanics, the mechanics of changing, because whatever it is that's stopping you is always a feeling. It's either procrastination, procrastination is just a fear, yeah. underlying everything, it's just fear. So let's eliminate that fear. Mm. You know, let's let's systematically eliminate that fear and then go to step number four, which is let's replace mm. that with something that is going to be the antithesis of the fear, the something that's going to help you. And yeah. then third step is let's condition it so you don't have to keep doing it over and over again. And so would you say at that point it becomes part of who you are, like exactly. your identity? Yes, okay. And absolutely. then it creates lasting change. Yes, and that is lasting change, yeah. Cool. And so um, I'd love to ask just with your journey being, you know, um, how would you describe your, first, how, do, how would you describe your involvement with Tony? I mean, head oh. coach, um, speaker, how do you describe that relationship and then what's the um, the biggest lessons learned from that? Uh, first and foremost, Tony is my dear, dear friend. And he's been my friend from the very beginning. I met him uh, as a friend versus, I didn't know who, I, I, I had no idea who Tony Robbins was and this was 1980, I'll date myself, uh, 85, <laughs> oh, wow. 1985. Yeah. And I went to his seminar, which was, now it's the UPW, but I had no, I, I went, I was having a bad time in my life, and a friend of mine said, well, you gotta go see this seminar. I went to the seminar, and I was there, I wasn't in a great place, and uh, there was people dancing all over the place, and all this stuff, and I'm going, I'm out of here. And uh, one of his trainers came up and started talking to me, because he saw it was in, wasn't doing so well, and I remember thinking to myself, well, this Robbins guy, whoever he is, by the way, I had no idea what he taught, who he was, anything about it. I just wound up there. Uh, he said, uh, 
this guy, you know, was helping me, and I thought, well, this Robbins guy trains his people real well. This guy was really friendly with me, and uh, uh, very long story short, that person was Tony. You know, seminars were so small, nobody yeah. knew who he was, and he was like in the crowd. And uh, we became friends, and, uh, and I recognized, and, and I had already started studying, as a matter of fact, I was, uh, no, I, was I was out of school then, out of college then, but um, my background is psychology even yeah. then. But I watched this guy uh, shortcut the, uh, the process of helping people go from point A to point B, and I was hooked. Mm -hmm. And I was hooked on the process of helping people. At the time, I was a musician. That was my, my uh, profession, and that's what, you know, what I wanted to do. And, uh, and so we became friends. Uh, and, I, and to answer your question, you know, through the years, um, when my music career ended, I, I, I opened a practice in Los Angeles as a psychologist and started helping yeah. people and started working with Tony. And through time, uh, as you said, became the head trainer and mm -hmm. facilitate with Tony on stage. Um, but I think the biggest lesson that I learned from him is it's still ongoing, uh, is that, that people are not fragile, people are not delicate, and people want to change, and so don't be afraid to, or stated in the positive, be courageous enough to step into people's lives if they, wow. if they ask for it, and, and ask the hard questions, have the hard conversation, and push them even when it's difficult, because sometimes it is. You know, mm. Sometimes uh, you know, people will come to me and they're in pain, and it's going to be necessary for me to even give them a little bit more pain for them to get on the other side. So, that's good. Courage. I mean, yeah. it's it's to get what they really want. They got to step through that fear. Mm -hmm. That's a challenge that I see on the coaching side. Is mm -hmm. someone will be so clear in what they want, and they'll be so close. They'll be at the five yard line, but then there's that that sabotage. Yeah. And actually, mm -hmm. um, what, what's something that to help someone prevent them from that sabotage moment? I'm curious if there's anything that you would that you um, have as a technique or tool to prevent someone from unwinding all of the progress that they've been making yeah um, and, and this is part of uh, again what I call magnetic success is welcome it mm -hmm. bring it into your life see uh, I'll, I'll use this analogy I say this to people all the time uh, if you come into my office and you get a fear of dogs guess what's going to be there it's going to be a dog and the reason being is because let's face it right now and yeah. deal with it I want that fear and everything to come up with right now and let's deal with it. With most people, whenever anything uncomfortable comes up, there's so many distractions, there's just so many uh, easy ways to go over here and to go over here and to sidestep that. And that is called sabotage in itself. It truly is, because that's where it starts. Nobody, yeah. nobody goes, okay, I'm almost to the finish line, I'm gonna stop right now. What they do is they go, I'm almost to the finish line. Oh, I don't think I can make it. This is tiring. Oh, so on and so forth. I've never been able to do this before. I go, oh, look, cake. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. and they do that. And, 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 and this no longer is that pull that they need. Yeah. So the trick is, is to just to keep them right here in this moment and have them feel that fear and have them get beyond it. Because an old wise sage once told me, he goes, look, here's the way it is. He says, you got two options. If the tiger is chasing you, you can run away and pretty soon you're going to get tired and the tiger is going to catch you anyway. Or you can turn and fight the tiger. And if you fight the tiger, there's only two ways it's going to happen. This is going to happen. Either the tiger's going to win or you're going to win. And he goes, those are our, our options. And most people are afraid to turn around and face that tiger. But what they forget is this. It's not a tiger. It's just a feeling. As most people look at this, this big, this, uh, you know, ominous thing that they can't even describe, and it's not, it's just a feeling, it's just fear. And fear, just like any other emotion, can be mm -hmm. changed like that. Yeah. And you do it enough times, and you do it in a very specific way, the very thing that caused you to be fearful becomes the thing that encourages you to move forward. I know you, yep. you were just talking before, you, you, you know, were in a very bad place in your life when your mom gave you the book, and, and so on and so forth, and you, put something on your chest. 
you know, that in itself said, you know what, I'm standing up to it right now and I'm yeah. going for it. And it was a reminder to you every single time you look yeah. in the mirror. Yeah, every day. Sure. It wasn't going go, away. Oh yeah, there's that. I got to do this. <laughs> and it became part of your identity. Yeah. And that's where people fall short. So one of the things that we help people do is let's get clear on what your identity is. Let's bust through that stuff and let's condition so it so that it becomes automatic. So that you wake up and as you said, it becomes who you are. Oh, it's so good. Bam. That is so yeah. good. Um, Man, I can't wait to have you at our event. I'm so, excited about so, this um, so we've got our Life and Fire event coming up, um, which is December one, two, three, and uh, so excited to have you there. So, thank you for joining My us. Pleasure. I'm, it's going to be huge. It's, this is you're the perfect you know person to have with us at the thank event. You. So, um, but I'd love for you to share, you know, just as we wrap up, just some of the things that you're going to be bringing to the table for the event, and what uh, what you know what our life on we call our our, our tribe, the Life on Fire family. So, okay. what the Life on Fire family can expect to learn, you know, with you there. Uh, uh, two things. Number one is not just a learning experience because we learn a lot of stuff. Yep. You know, we learn stuff. We and we all know what to do. Again, weight and money. Uh, we know how to lose weight, but we don't always do what we know. So, uh, one of the things that I'll be sharing at your event is is we're going to get a result. The mm -hmm. thing that I talk about, your fear. I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you a tool on exactly how to do that. At, at, at least the very beginnings of it. We don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to give as, as much as I can. Uh, a, a tool on, on these three things. Number one, how to, first off, let's find out what it is that stops you. Find out what you want. Find out what stops you. And I'm going to show you right then and there. You're going to understand the mechanics of change mm -hmm. right then and there. The things we have just been talking about, we're going to do yeah. that. Uh, and then secondly is we'll start the conversation at the very least about how to become a, a magnet to the success that you want, a magnet to the things that you want so that you walk this planet, not just certain and, and, and knowing you're going to make stuff happen. You know, stuff shows up in your life. Yep. Yeah. So good. Well, uh, man, I wish we could... Uh, do this all day, pretty much. But <laughs> I got but, stuff uh, to do. Yeah, to be respectful of Joseph's time, we're gonna we'll wrap things up. And I uh, just want to say, December one, two, three, lifeonfireevent.com. Hang with me, hang with Joseph, and this is the beginning of an amazing journey. And I really believe that that what we're gonna be bringing to the table, what you're gonna be bringing, this will be the catal the catalyst that sets your life on fire. It will ignite that fire in their belly to go bigger for your dreams, to have the courage to go towards it and break through those things holding you back. So hope to see you there at lifeandfireevent.com and thanks again, man. My pleasure. Appreciate it.